You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to produce consistently. Before we get to this, let me tell you a couple things. First of all, send out a daily motivation text message free of charge. A message guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. Text me to get this message every single day straight to your phone. You're also going to text me and tell me the best insight you got from today's masterclass. My number is 305-384-6894. So send me a text. You'll be in the on my list to get the daily motivation every single day. And as this episode goes on, you're just going to tell me the best thing you got from it in a text message. Secondly, my work on your game university is the next step for you working with me directly. That's where my coaching programs are at. That's where you can get access to all of my courses, such as bulletproof mindset, such as business builder, such as content machine, such as selling yourself and 20 plus more courses. You get access to all of those lifetime access as, a, as of this recording, as a member of Work On Your Game University. So you can join there at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Also, I send out physical mailings every month, my Bulletproof Bulletin magazine, which if you're watching on video, Bulletin, you can see it right there above my right shoulder. Also, my Masterclass Black Book, which is in the printer right now. I will actually have a, I'll be showing people a copy of that probably in, by the time you hear this, we already, I'm already showing it to people. So Masterclass Black Book, I'm sending both of those out every single month to every member of my university. As a member, you will be getting those every month at no additional charge. If you want to subscribe just to those, go to workingthegameuniversity.com. There's a way that you can do just that. Now let's get into the topic, how to produce consistently. Now I think everybody wants to do this. Everybody wants to perform. If you're listening to a show called Work On Your Game, I'm assuming that you want to perform and you want to produce outcomes. And you don't want to just produce one time, right? You want to produce over and over and over again. You want people to know you're going to produce, and then you want to actually come through and produce. So what we'll share here today is a framework for producing anything, doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's something positive, I'm hoping, on a consistent basis, hopefully to the point that you can make yourself a known entity for the thing that you're producing. Now, why does it matter to be a known entity for what you produce? It matters because when people know you as the person who can produce that thing, now they will come to you and they'll be willing to uh, pay you for it. They'll be willing to give you whatever it is that you want for it. And they'll be willing to refer you. They'll be wanting to refer you to other people because they know that you're going to deliver. As long as you deliver consistently and they are happy, they'll tell other people, hey, I'm happy with this person. You should go to them if you need this thing. So producing consistently actually helps build your reputation and your reputation, as the saying goes, precedes you. Your reputation can do work for you that you don't have to do yourself. So that's why you want to produce consistently. Let's talk about how to do it. Point number one topic once again is how to produce consistently. Number one, choose an area in which your knowledge and skill set are deep. If you want to produce something consistently, you got to actually be good at the thing that you're going to produce. All right, don't pick an area in which you don't know much because now your, your well of skill and your well of information and your well of know-how is not deep enough for you to be consistent because at some point, relatively quickly, you're going to have given everything that you have. All right, so that one, you don't want to try to base your reputation around that because right, it ain't too far that we can go. One way to produce consistently, folks, is to make sure you simply do not run out of material, opinions, things to say, or ways to approach a topic. In other words, you need to be an expert at what you're doing right, because that's, what, that's a good definition of an expert. They don't run out of material. They don't run out of opinions. They don't run out of things to say, and they don't run out of approaches. Why? Because they've seen so much, they know so much, they've done so much in an area. So you got to really know your stuff. The more you know your stuff, the easier it will be for you to talk about, produce, create, or share on a particular subject. So if you pick a subject that you don't know a lot about, or you're not learning a lot, or not consuming a lot in that area, then what happens is you're going to run into the simple problem of running out of material. And you can't produce consistently in anything if you run out of material. So 
what is your angle or approach going to be? And is it something that you can do consistently, like perpetually, something you can just keep doing forever? If you had to do it forever, could you do it for the rest of your life? All right, that's an area that you want to pick. So understand you're probably not going to have uh, 17 of these as options. You're probably not even going to have five. You may have one, maybe two. If you're an exceptional person, you might have two. Most of us have usually somewhere, it, I would say yeah, one, maybe two, I would say for most people. Um, the exceptional person might have three. All right, I can give you one, maybe two. I talked about mindset and strategies and systems that and that support the execution. Some people talk about money. Some people talk about relationships, some current events, some do sports or entertainment. Pick an area in which you would be okay if you had to, to have a full-time job doing that thing forever. What is that gonna be for you? For you? Just in case you needed to. Uh, hopefully you don't have to do it forever, but just in case you needed to, what area would that be for you? Make it something that you actually want to do, not something that would be like a, a necessary evil or something that you would at one point wake up hating having to do that job. Point number two, topic once again today is how to produce consistently. Number two, pick something that the public, specifically your public, actually wants. When I say your public, that means the audience of people who are or would be paying attention to you. What do they actually want? Understand that your public is not the same as somebody else's public. So the public, your public may want thing A from you, but they want thing B from someone different. So you got to know who your audience is and you have to know how your audience is seeing you because that will help clue you in as to what they want from you specifically. Just because you want to talk about a certain subject does not mean that the public actually wants to hear about it, see about it, read about it, and it doesn't mean that the public wants it from you. So if you want to talk about subject A, B, C, make sure that the public is actually, whoever your public is, your audience, make sure they actually care about that topic, whatever it happens to be, and make sure that whatever they care about that topic, they want to get material on that subject from you specifically. Again. They may want the subject, but they might not want it from you because you have a certain reputation in their eyes. They see you as a certain type of individual. And if you want to change, you want to shift how the public is seeing you and what they want from you, well, there's a little bit of work that's going to have to go into that. And when I say a little bit, I'm kind of being tongue in cheek. There's a significant amount of work that has to go into that to make people shift their mindset around you and what you're offering. I'll give you a personal example. When I first came out online and started to get known, it was through basketball material. I was talking about basketball. I was making videos, showing myself playing basketball. Everything was around basketball. So all of my audience naturally were a bunch of basketball focused individuals. So when I transitioned from the sports world into the business world, and when I was getting out of basketball and going into what you now, many of you now know me for, some of you never even saw me in the basketball space, I would get comments from basketball players who would say to me, Dre, hey, I liked your material more when you would just talk about basketball, or hey, why don't you talk about basketball more? Or somebody would come on YouTube and leave a comment and say, hey, I thought this was a basketball channel. So there was a time period where I was transitioning, where I was no longer um, talking directly to the basketball players about what they wanted because all they wanted was Dre talking about basketball. I wasn't doing it anymore. But at the same time, I was not yet established in this space where I talk about mindset, strategies, and systems. So I was kind of in a, in a no man's land space for a certain period of time, but I understood where I wanted to go. So I was willing to take that ride. I was willing to take that ride and go through that period where I was no longer the guy to the basketball people, what they wanted, and I wasn't yet established in this space. So if you wanna make that transition, you can, but understand you gotta be strategic about it, you gotta be systematic about it, and you must be very consistent with it so that the people in the space where you're trying to get established can finally see, all right, all right this person is for real because they're sticking to this. Let's, let's see what they have to say, and then you start to establish yourself. So over the years, for example, this very show, this Work On Your Game Masterclass, every single year we've grown in the number of people who are listening to the show simply because every year I've, consist I've stayed consistent in making sure that people are seeing me, people are hearing me, people are seeing what we're uh, putting out there. So from back in 2016, first year of this show, we did 183,000 listeners to the show in 2016. 2018, we did 600,000. 2020, we were... Uh, just under 600,000. That was the year where I had actually taken the show behind a paywall for a while and we took it back off the paywall. 2021, we did 1.1 million. 2022, we did 
five million last year 2000 yeah 2022 2 million 300 thousand listeners of the show so we'll see if we can top that number in 2023 i'm sharing those numbers to impress upon you that because i stayed consistent in what i was doing over time again i'm talking about from 2016 to 2022 that's six years okay this is not an overnight thing that's how i was able to kind of move into this new space to where uh, many of you never even saw me as a basketball player and if i was putting myself out there as a basketball player you wouldn't be interested because you're not trying to learn how to play basketball so that is what you have to do you have to put yourself out there in such a way that the people who are interested in that topic see you as a person that they want to hear about that topic from so you got to find that intersection between something that people actually want and they are interested in getting it from you as their source of information, or at least one of them. This requires a bit of experimentation sometimes, both for you and for your recipients, because you gotta find with what you, you gotta find something that you're good at actually producing and that people want to get from you. The more you produce, the quicker you will find the answer to this. So for example, I've known people who I've told, look, if you want to figure out, and especially this is especially important for those of you who are just starting out. And I'm, again, I'll use myself as an example here as a, um, yeah, as an example for what I'm about to tell you, that when you're trying to establish yourself on a certain topic or you're trying to figure out what your topic's gonna be or who your audience is gonna be, the more you publish, the more you are seen, the more you're out there on a certain subject or subjects, plural, the better you can see what people are responding to, what people are interested in, and know what people are taking to when it comes to you. You know what works and what doesn't work, but you gotta be active so you can see what's working. All right, the more things you put out there, the better you can get the answers to this. So when I was first starting out in the basketball space, I was putting out videos every single day. And guess how often the show comes out still? Every single day, I kind of built the muscle of putting my material out so consistently and so frequently that I am quickly gathering feedback and then I can make my adjustments based on the results that I'm seeing. But because I'm putting my material out so often, I can make, and because I'm putting my material so, out so often, I can get the results quickly. But let's say I was only putting material out once a week or every three days or every, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, something like that. It would, excuse me, it would take longer for me to get the feedback simply because I'm not putting out enough material to get the feedback any faster than I am. So if you want to get material, you want to get feedback on your material quickly, put out more material. All right, simple as that. So when I first came out, I knew I was going to talk about basketball back in the, back in the days, 2005, when I first started. I found out there was an audience of people who wanted to hear about it and they wanted to see it. And what I talk about now was not part of the original plan, but in the process of talking about basketball, the players who were watching me, they would ask about mindset. So these kind of connected to each other. And that's more that's more directed towards what i talk about on this show now i mean it started with mindset it's not the only thing i talk about now but the reason i was able to get to this as an idea the way that i did is because i was putting out material so often often multiple pieces of material that people would see it and one of the things they noticed that hey this guy's really consistent dre how do you be consistent hey that idea the answer to that question how to be consistent doesn't apply just to somebody playing a sport that applies to anyone so i was able to explain it in such a way that someone who didn't even play sports could get value from it and that's how i started to morph into and notice hey people who don't play basketball could actually learn from the things that i'm talking about here so you're able to speed up the process by increasing your output those of you who want to if you're trying to figure out what is your niche going to be what's going to be your what's going to be the space that you want to dominate and establish yourself in increase the pace of your outputs and you will get feedback faster and you'll get more feedback and the more feedback you get the better you can make your adjustments the slower the output the longer it's going to take for you to get the feedback necessary the statistically significant feedback necessary for you to make the choices about what to do next point number three today's topic once again is how to be or how to excuse me how to produce consistently number three Create a structure that aids in the production of the desired outcome. What does that mean? Now that you've decided what you're going to do, create a structure that makes it easy for you to produce consistently. Remember that any challenge with discipline is simply a challenge with structure. Let me tell you what episode of the show uh, I've talked about that in case you didn't hear it. That was episode number 2366. 
Your discipline challenge is a structural challenge. So you wanna structure your work and your life such that it is easy for you to produce consistently. So whatever it is you're producing, when do you do it? Where do you do it? How do you do it? What ancillary pieces or people need to be in place for you to do it? You gotta create a process for having these things in place already so it's easy for you to produce over and over again. So for example, one reason why this show comes out as consistently as it does, and as consistently as it does means every single day since 2016 and over 2,400 episodes is because I have a structure that makes it simple for me to do it consistently. If you watch this on video, you can see that I'm in the same place every single time when I'm recording the show. Rarely do I record the show anywhere other than where I'm at right now. Only time that this scenery is gonna change is if I you know, move the furniture around in here or I actually move, physically move where I'm at and you know, move my office or something like that, then it'll change to that place, but then it'll be consistent in that place. But whatever it is, it's gotta be consistent. Nobody does anything every single day by simply just winging it and just coming up with something on the spot that day. All right, that's mentally taxing and it's unsustainable. But when someone is producing consistently, guaranteed there's a process happening there, whether you know about it, like I'm telling you, I tell you what my process is, or you don't know about it, there's still a process that is taking place. So I have a structure in place that makes it easy for me to be consistent. So I know the when, where, the how, and the what in order for me to record episodes of this show. I pick a topic that I know I like to talk about. I don't have a problem talking about the things that I talk about on this show. If I had to talk about this every single day for as long as I'm capable of speaking, I'm good with that. I like talking about these topics. And I like talking about, and I'm also talking about things that the people who are listening to me and the people who will be listening to me are interested in and they wanna hear it being talked about and they wanna hear me talk about it. So all three, I wanna talk about it there's an audience of people who want to hear about it, and there's audience of people who want to hear it from me. And I simply follow that process over and over and over again. And in the Work On Your Game system course inside of Work On Your Game University, I explain to you how to put these systems and strategies in place for your business and for your life, period. Again, systems and strategies are not limited to just business stuff, stuff that involves money. You can use systems and strategies for everything that you do. So let's recap today's class, which is how to produce consistently. All right, anything you wanna produce, something positive, on a consistent basis, there's a way to do it. Number one, choose an area in which your knowledge and skill set are deep so that you simply do not run out of material, run out of things to talk about or things you wanna do. Number two, pick something that the public, your specific public, actually wants and that they want from you. Find that intersection between what you wanna do, what the public wants and what they want from you so that you can become the source for them on that specific thing. And if you need to change, put out as much material as possible so you can get feedback as quickly as possible so you can see what works and what doesn't so you're not flying blind and hoping that you're right, but instead you wanna know that you're right. And again, the feedback from the public will tell you. Number three, create a structure that aids in the outcome. In other words, structure things such that it is easy for you to produce consistently. A reason I'm able to put this show out consistently is I know exactly what I need in place in order for me to record episodes, in order for them, them to get edited, published, distribute it so that everybody knows about it, there's a structure to that. There's not something that I'm just randomly thinking up and figuring out what to do on a day-to-day -day basis. You need to have a structure in place so that you can be consistent. Remember, any time that you wanna be more disciplined, what you need is more structure, not more uh, hard work, not more motivation, not more belief in yourself. You need to put a structure in place and the structure makes the discipline easy. So with all that said, Text to get text to, text me to let me know the best insight or idea you got from today's masterclass at this number, 305-384-6894. And secondly, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Join the university. We got there's three options there on that page. You can join it in the coaching program, be coached directly by me. You can get access to all the courses or you can subscribe to the Bulletproof Bulletin and the Black Book that we send out every month to your doorstep in the university, again, at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.